I am Caroline Faraj. I am uh, the editor-in-chief of CNN Arabia and in charge of the Arabic services at the CNN uh, company. Today, it is our honor uh, to uh, debate with chief of the government of Morocco, Abdel Ilah bin Kiran, and uh, his uh, CV is well known to all of you. However, for those who don't know him, I would like to give uh, some uh, points uh, or special uh, uh, issues about him or some comments about him. He assumed uh, his uh, current position in 2011. Prior to that, he was uh, the Secretary General and is still uh, uh, the just Secretary General of the Justice and Development uh, Party, which is the Conservative Islamic Party. He assumed uh, this position in the party as of 2008. He has uh, assumed several positions in the political and uh, party circles in Morocco. Some of the most uh, significant issues uh, related to him is that he is very, very attached to his mother. He loves her uh, mother. Yes, I think she, uh, she is uh, uh, fit to be a chief of government. Uh, yes, yes, I heard that uh, she is uh, 19 years old. Well, she could have been a chief of government uh, much better than me. Uh, Mr. Ben Kiran is uh, described by uh, some of the observers as a conservative but uh, an open-minded uh, uh, person who hears and adheres other points of views. Let me start off, sir, uh, with a question. If you were to uh, mention three issues that are sources of uh, pride for you as of the assumption of uh, this position of Chief of Government of Morocco, what would you say they are? In the name of God, the most merciful, the most compassionate. I would like to describe uh, the process of how I assume this position of chief of government, but I will uh, restrict uh, myself uh, to your question. The government uh, program uh, or plans of action are very broad. Uh, and in uh, Morocco, we have what we call the appointment uh, by uh, the uh, king, and uh, the uh, prime minister is appointed uh, by the party who has uh, won the elections. It might be the secretary general or another uh, person, and uh, the king has uh, chosen uh, the secretary general. Uh, there is another uh, means of appointment, which is uh, appointment by the parliament, uh, where the parliament would vote uh, on uh, the person, and this uh, Ha, takes place uh, usually two months after the appointment of the king. I held uh, various uh, discussions uh, with various uh, guests who came uh, to understand my, who, who came to discover who this uh, chief of government uh, were, and all their discussions were focused on uh, the main issues that I would be taking up. Uh, they were always asking me that question. So I had to come up with uh, three main points uh, to answer their queries. The first idea is the following. An attempt uh, to uh, rectify and adjust the uh, macroeconomic uh, situation in Morocco. I found that the budget, I found out that the budget uh, is uh, uh, getting stifled uh, uh, because of a various uh, host of uh, factors, uh, mainly related to the price of uh, oil uh, that change uh, that change regardless of uh, the situation of uh, countries and individuals. Uh, yes, 
Yes, of course. Uh, this happens. Uh, this can be also applied to your government. No, let me go back to the uh, price of the oil. It was 61. It is 61 uh, dollars a barrel today. But when I was appointed, it was uh, 110, and uh, we budgeted on the basis of 105. And uh, any increase uh, would uh, cost us 600 uh, dirhams or 60 million dollars. Uh, uh, around the year when uh, the price of oil went up by a single dollar. So our budget uh, was uh, stifled and uh, it was under a lot of uh, stress and it needed amendment and uh, adjustment. Uh, yes, uh, that uh, if you are going to grade yourself from 1 to 10, what would, how would you grade yourself on that uh, respect? I would say 8 to 10. And I say that uh, modestly because uh, we were able to lift uh, subsidies uh, to the uh, fuel uh, sector. And in the first year, we used to subsidize uh, uh, various uh, items uh, by 57 uh, million dollars and this year it's only 23 so as of 2012 to 2015 we were able uh, to bring it down by 10 uh, billion dollars uh, in over f those years and this is very important now the second uh, main uh, issue all right the second main issue is the following i found that contracting uh, contract contracting business uh, was quite far profitable, but uh, they were heavily burdened because of the red tape, because of uh, bribes, uh, before because of various uh, judicial uh, procedures. And I am convinced that uh, contracting is uh, the main uh, core element of economy. If we don't have a vibrant uh, contracting sector, our economy would not uh, flourish. And uh, we use uh, uh, we use French in Morocco, and we said we need to facilitate la vie à l'entreprise, which means we need to facilitate life to the enterprises uh, and to the business. Uh, and uh, over those two years, we were able uh, to uh, gain uh, 26 uh, positions. Uh, I think. Um, uh, ranking, uh, ranking, uh, the international ranking, uh, we were able uh, to ha assume a better position in terms of uh, contracting and enterprise uh, business. I uh, said, you know, uh, we have a state, but we can also think uh, of ourselves as a merchant uh, person, as a trader, a tradesman, and uh, that uh, how I uh, thought uh, uh, that uh, we should deal uh, with the uh, contractors. Uh, we should uh, give the contractors the right, uh, and we cannot uh, put certain conditions on them to have a certain amount of liquidity or this or that. Uh, it is up to the contractors uh, to decide what they would do with their own liquidity. The state should deal with the contractors on that uh, basis. Uh, uh, the fuel uh, tradesmen uh, uh, owed us a lot. We borrowed a lot of money from them, and now we have uh, settled all our debts uh, to them after uh, my, the assumption of my position. I have to recognize or uh, confess to you that uh, before assuming my uh, position, I had no idea whatsoever about uh, the details. And I was uh, given the details uh, uh, slowly. And uh, I learned that uh, persons, uh, fuel tradesmen, would uh, give uh, taxes to the state and they would only regain it once they sell their fuel. And I thought that that was not acceptable. We needed to give uh, uh, back the rights uh, to the tradesmen. And you know how uh, uh, government work goes. We start raising our voices and uh, uh, demanding this or that, uh, but it only takes uh, uh, at least a year or more to uh, achieve. Yes, you've been judged since 2012, so you have been able to achieve uh, things. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I have started to uh, uh, reap uh, the fruits of uh, my uh, efforts. Uh, the businessmen or tradesmen uh, did not expect uh, to regain uh, uh, those uh, taxes that they had uh, paid, uh, which are around $200 million. And uh, we have agreed with them that uh, we will settle uh, this uh, tax uh, or get rid of it uh, gradually. This means that uh, Moroccan contract 
factors uh, feel that uh, the government is changing, not in terms of funds uh, available, but in the means that or measures. Uh, uh, sir, uh, how would you grade yourself for this second achievement uh, from 1 to 10? I think 6, 6 out of 10. All right. And I'm here, I'm a little bit uh, lenient. Uh, well, you're quite modest, sir. You're not giving yourself very high grades. Uh, maybe it should have been five, not six, says uh, Mr. Uh, uh, ben Kiran. The thir third uh, point, uh, or the third uh, main uh, point, uh, frankly speaking, let me say the following. We know that uh, uh, following independence and because of the occupation in the previous parts, uh, we know that uh, uh, the strong people uh, and the strong men uh, and uh, the people who surround them, uh, uh, meaning uh, tradesmen as well as uh, opposition or so-called opposition, all of them uh, brought their ranks together and uh, got uh, their profit. Uh, and benefited from the situation. But that left out uh, a huge uh, segment of the society on its own. Uh, and uh, that uh, segment, uh, I mean, uh, represents uh, the poor people uh, who had to uh, deal uh, uh, and uh, to manage their own affairs uh, on the basis of selling out their own uh, minimum uh, and minimal uh, possessions. And we thought that it is not fair and it is not uh, um, logical to leave them uh, uh, to their own devices and that we need to take care of them in order to reestablish balance to the society. So we talked about uh, balancing economy, balancing uh, contract. Uh, the contractors uh, and businessmen segment, uh, and then uh, balancing the entire uh, society. So we started to, we raised uh, grants uh, to the students uh, by around 35%. Uh, this is something that was unheard of for 40 years or more. We also uh, took care of uh, the retired people uh, through the pension uh, fund. Uh, by virtue of law, uh, the retirement uh, or the pension was uh, seven dollars uh, a month, uh, and that meant that they that it was impossible for them, uh, the retired people, to live on that uh, allocation. So I had to deal with the Minister of Finance and to uh, discuss this issue with them, with him, and uh, the minister minimum uh, retirement uh, uh, pension uh, was raised to $100 uh, a month. Uh, this is a good uh, number uh, in Morocco. Well, yes, sir, from 7 to 100, it's a good raise. Yes, ma'am? Uh, uh, we found that there were some uh, medications uh, were uh, overpriced, uh, and uh, we lowered uh, those prices. And uh, we, for example, if we buy uh, those medications uh, as a government, uh, the, the medications would be given to us at a much lower price. So we had to reduce the prices, because those prices were given to the citizens at a much higher uh, barem or level than given to us, so we needed to uh, lower it for everyone, not only for the government. Uh, then we turned uh, to the uh, widows, uh, or to the workers uh, segment, uh, and uh, there are the uh, daily workers, uh, and uh, we had to uh, cater uh, for their uh, life uh, support once uh, they stop uh, their work uh, if uh, as a result of an injury. So again, I say widows of uh, those daily workers uh, uh, suffered a lot, and we needed to focus on them and take care of them, because uh, these widows would not be able to work uh, after uh, the injury of uh, their uh, workers, uh, of their husbands. Uh, and we decided that we needed to allocate uh, certain funds uh, to them, and that might come up to $100 a month. Uh, and we took up similar measures uh, to help uh, the society at large. And uh, we tried our uh, best to help the workers, uh, the students, uh, etc. And uh, we also ensured uh, medical insurance for all students. All our students have uh, free medical insurance uh, till the age of 26. 26, yes, yes. They have this uh, free medical uh, coverage. Uh, 
So we did this uh, gradually. Let me add uh, some liberalization of the economy. When I assumed the uh, power or my position, I found out that uh, only physicians uh, can invest uh, in uh, the health uh, sector. And if you are not a physician or a doctor, you would not be able to invest or open up clinics or do this or that. I thought that uh, I needed to change this. This issue has been on the table for 10 years. and. Uh, uh, no one was bold enough to deal with it. I said the Minister of Health, who used to be a communist, and he is still part of our uh, party, but uh, the communist part of his party, the communist party, which has uh, changed its name. So he is bold, and he was able to confront uh, that issue and uh, to open uh, the uh, Pandora's box and uh, discuss that very thorny issue, and I supported him. So this is how I worked. I have always believed that uh, the government in Morocco and in many other countries uh, undertake tasks that should not be uh, their responsibility. They started to do that because the community or the society was weak to start uh, off. But uh, later on, uh, uh, things should have changed. Uh, government should assume tasks that uh, citizens cannot assume. It is much better for citizens uh, to assume their uh, tasks, and the government would be there to coordinate, to follow up, and not to achieve. Uh, the government should not become the professor, the teacher, the physician, uh, the uh, farmer, and the tradesman, because the government uh, does badly at all of these tasks, uh, fares very, very badly. And uh, this means that the society is deprived of uh, excellent uh, services. If you are a headmistress of a school and uh, you report directly to the owners of the school, you will excel at your work. But if you are a headmistress uh, at a public school, you will not do anything. Uh, you will just await instructions if, if these instructions come to you. All right, sir. Let's. Uh, go into the domestic affairs, uh, if you allow me to focus on uh, this issue. Before we talk about regional affairs, uh, the uh, Directorate for Planning and uh, the Statistics uh, Department in Morocco expects uh, a growth of 4.8% uh, in uh, the economy compared to 2.6% of last year. Now we are in the midst of 2015. Are you satisfied with the results uh, that the economy has achieved in Morocco? And do you expect that it will come up to the expected figure when it comes to development and growth? I think, yes, this is highly possible. We might even uh, go beyond it, and we can uh, even achieve 5%. But let me tell you the following. When I assumed my position, I found that the budget deficit was around 7.1%, according to our own calculations. 77 7 according to the IMF figures. And we did not know what to do. We wanted to reduce the investment cap budget on the basis of the measures that I have mentioned to you. This year, it will be 4.3% the budget deficit. We reduced it to 5.2, then 4.9, and this year we will reduce it to 4.3. And we hope that within two years, it will be 3.5, which is the minimum accepted. But I have to acknowledge that this is not uh, my own uh, making. I contributed to this. To this. Uh, it is uh, God's will uh, that has uh, served our uh, objectives. Uh, bit, and I mean by that uh, uh, rainfall, uh, because we know that uh, it is very important for us to see uh, rain uh, uh, in Morocco. It is good for uh, uh, our economy and for our uh, psychology. And uh, over the last uh, few years, uh, we saw a lot of uh, rainfall. Uh, the first uh, French uh, 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 governor said that 
but uh, if you want to rule Morocco, you need to make sure that there is rainfall. And uh, thanks God, we did have rainfall. Another God, God's gift was the drop in the uh, price of oil. Of course, the, the Gulf people are not happy with it, but we were very happy with the fact that uh, the prices of uh, oil went out uh, from 105 uh, uh, from 110 to 105 and then it is 50 and 60 that was God sent to God's gift to us uh, that uh, helped us uh, investment uh, has gone up uh, savings also have gone up uh, we had uh, three months of uh, um, savings and now it is uh, five months or more uh, per uh, year for our government uh, My following question is related to unemployment. You have uh, achieved 9.9% uh, uh, figure uh, as uh, the minimum unemployment figure in Oro uh, Morocco. Are you optimistic? Do you think that you will uh, maintain this figure, uh, taking into consideration that, uh, there, uh, that uh, some unemployed people have started to shift towards uh, terrorism and joining ISIS? Firstly, I do hope that that figure is 9.9. .9. Well, sir, this is what is uh, the, the figure that I have read, uh, you know, that is published. Ma'am, if this uh, figure is correct, I'm more than happy. I think that unemployment is higher than 9.9%. However, this is not uh, the source of uh, my uh, concern. What uh, really uh, makes me worried is that uh, till now we were not able to find the appropriate uh, method uh, or methodology that would enable us uh, to come out of uh, um, uh, unemployment uh, logic. It is not a matter of figure, uh, a certain figure. Unemployment is in the frame of mind uh, a person who wants to work and does not find the appropriate work uh, to uh, cover uh, his or her basic needs is something that we need to work on. We have been trying to find that uh, idea, uh, that uh, methodology. I think that the means to solve unemployment are there, are there. We have tried, uh, or the previous governments have tried. Uh, but uh, those means uh, did not succeed uh, as expected. We tried to encourage people to go uh, towards investment in uh, private uh, entrepreneurships uh, or uh, projects. Uh, that did not succeed. Now, your second part of the question, to link uh, the unemployment to terrorism, I don't think so. Those who were, went uh, or were attracted by uh, external uh, terrorist groups are not necessarily unemployed people. They do work, but they conduct a uh, minimum uh, standard of works. And uh, uh, I think that the government should take care of them. In Morocco, there was a conflict over power at a certain point of time. Uh, a conflict over power, absolute power in general. And then there was a conflict over uh, um, capabilities, uh, mm -hmm. authorities. And uh, the uh, government wanted to keep all those authorities, which meant uh, that the government uh, has even uh, included uh, those, uh, the opponents who, uh, under, who threatened its authority. Our wages in Morocco are uh, and salaries are one are amongst the highest salaries uh, in uh, the Arab world. If the Egyptians uh, know that uh, a, a Moroccan physician starts off uh, with one thousand dollars a month, they would be extremely amazed because I heard that in two thousand and eleven the Egyptians wanted uh, the physicians to have a minimum of one thousand uh, pounds, Egyptian pounds, uh, in uh, Egypt, while we they start off with the $1,000 in Morocco. Some of our professors in the universities have $6,000 a month, which is um, close to what a minister gets. So what I'm trying to say is that our elite, our educated people uh, have uh, good uh, salaries. And uh, a teacher in a higher school uh, get uh, $1,500 a month. 
Sir, if uh, the government uh, pampers its uh, citizens to that extent, what is the problem? Well, no, 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 we don't pamper all uh, uh, categories, only the elites. The, uh, sir, why uh, does Morocco export a lot of uh, numbers of uh, those terrorists? Uh, well, you know what, ma'am? Uh, we had uh, an impressive number. Uh, well, first, let's say that we are around uh, 30 million uh, uh, people in Morocco. And uh, those who went uh, to various uh, terrorist organizations do not go beyond 1,000. Of course, 1,000 is a big number. but uh, and, and of course, it is uh, mainly linked to unemployment uh, and to the marginalization. Uh, uh, this marginalized uh, category was not even uh, catered for in an appropriate manner from a religious point of view even. That's why they turned extreme. And they found that extremism uh, uh, expressed uh, their desires. And uh, they were, uh, and uh, this is quite uh, unacceptable, of course. Often he is even perverted. He sees that the society is not caring for him. He finds a group that calls and invites him to become religious and to wear a certain dress code that is different from our dress code. He wears. Uh, in a humble manner and he feels that now he has significance and he can learn certain uh, holy verses and even give a religious opinion and he has his own status in the society. This is a big transformation and these are the groups who have been neglected, frankly speaking, in Morocco and in the future there's a need to rethink this thing because when you are preoccupied with those who may face you in your uh, attempts to governance, you pay attention there and you overlook others. But if you overlook others, there are others, uh, other groups who will not ignore this, uh, those groups and will uh, attract them to their own projects. Is this reason? Is it underlie what was uh, said that uh, there were? Uh, it's just certain constraints over certain freedoms in uh, Morocco and that some journalists have been arrested in, uh, in Morocco. What is the reason behind this uh, constraints imposed over freedoms? This makes me laugh. Please share with us your laugh. Usually people laugh with me, but this time I laugh alone. <laughs> Those who say that there are constraints imposed over freedoms in Morocco the least to say is they are ill-informed or unrealistic, if not malicious. Previously, I faced things that uh, during years that we described as the years of uh, the years of oppression, and maybe that was uh, um, overrated or an exaggeration. We don't even know what is written in the newspaper until we read it. And, and on TV, they say whatever they want. Uh, nobody dictates what they should say. True, that people honor Islam and His Majesty the King. Sometimes they even attack Islam. and. Even they mention His Majesty the, the King. What we do is try to follow up these things from a legal perspective. Other than that, there are no constraints imposed on journalists. True that some journalists face old problems that are being addressed and not in a 100% correct manner. Often, some organizations would catch such an incident, be it a legal organization or a freedoms uh, uh, organization, they would e exaggerate the problem. We tell them, okay, you take this against us. Why don't you do this to other countries that are close to us? They say, those countries don't even do don't open the door at all. But you open the door for us. And you want to be ranked with other European countries in terms of freedoms. Therefore, you are the appropriate party for us to monitor. Therefore, this is a kind of penalty imposed on us. 
I invite you and any of the participants to invite Morocco and to see on your own and to see the level of freedoms that prevail. They are almost with no limits. I have a last question on the local level. It is known that there is a division of uh, responsibilities between uh, the uh, uh, kingdom, uh, the, the, the institution of the king and the government. It, this kind of sharing of responsibilities, does it have a, uh, cause any obstacles? Allow me once again. This is a dis an ongoing discussion in Morocco. Are the responsibilities in Morocco divided between the king and the uh, uh, chief of government or not. I tell you they are not divided. When I read the, the constitution, I find that the king is the head of state. And the king is the Amin al Amir al-Mu'minin or the prince of the believers. This is a title that has been inherited for centuries. For those who do not know, we are an almost religious state. This is our structure. When these the Spaniards came uh, to the Sultan and told him we'll take an part in the south. Where are your borders? He says wherever you s find a person who says uh, that there is no God but Allah, this is our borders. This is our people. This is how we are built since 12 centuries. We are not only tens of years old. The king is the head of state, he is the emir of the believers, and he is the uh, head of the cabinet. Where is this division? True, that the chief of government is the chief of the administration, but he is under the responsibility of the king. This is something the world doesn't want to understand. Uh, this existed in France. They call it the coexistence or cohabitation within the authority. I tell you, if we do this in Morocco, then we will ruin the country. I would like to explain. You are Lebanese, you are Jordanian, you have identified, but we have people from the, uh, with the Faraj surname in Morocco, and they are an Andalusian family. You have touched on a very sensitive issue. This is being addressed by the Moroccan media. Yes, true. At some point, I told you there is a conflict over uh, power and then uh, conflict over authorities or mandates. I either go for uh, the conflict over authorities or move in the direction of cooperation. I decided not to go into a conflict. And I understood that conflict is not in the interest of Morocco. May possibly, the, in the media, it is portrayed that I'm always uh, causing problems with the king. But I wanted to put an end to this media image. And I said that I am going to cooperate with the king. God asks us to cooperate. He did not ask us to struggle or to make cause conflicts. He said, you need to cooperate. And this is the position of the party. Yes, it is my position as well as the party's position. And also there are certain currents within the party. However, I, as a secretary general, this is my conviction. If they don't want this in the party, I would quit the party and quit my position as well. What use is it for you to be a chief of government? I said I will work with the king and cooperate with him, and I can do anything in favor of our society. And we moved in this direction. Morocco enjoys security and stability since three and a half years. Not one demonstration has come to the streets. That is worth noting. There were scattered demonstrations. Sometimes they are big, sometimes they are small uh, for certain uh, organizations. Uh, however, they have taken note that this is futile and the society is content. And unlike what uh, people thought, such harmony in the logic satisfies the Moroccans, unlike what others think. Is this what you described? Uh, was it the reason for the fact that you did not seek to have a parliamentary monarchy in uh, Morocco? According to our education, the parliamentary monarchy means that uh, the king uh, is 
is a king, but he does not rule. But for us, this is useless. We don't need su such a king. Is this your position and the party's position and the Moroccan position? We are a Muslim people. A king that has no powers or authorities and can interfere and uh, to put things back on track, in my opinion, Muslims do not need such a king. He will not be useful for Muslims. This may be useful in Europe, but not for us. We want to have a king who uh, fairly rules and an executive uh, branch that helps him and a judicial authority that helps him this logic. And decisions are taken in cooperation and coordination between uh, the uh, monarchical organization and the government. Mostly, we have certain authorities and we do not go back to the king in, within our mandate. And he has certain authorities that he doesn't have to refer to us. But there are authorities and, and in which he has to inform us according to the Constitution, according to the Constitution and according to the uh, customs. Ms. Caroline, you are a sister anyway. Sure I am, she says. Listen to me. In, is, is it possible to write all the details in a marriage contract? Marriage is built on complementarity. And each party would exert all possible effort. Maybe the example is not very uh, accurate, but in governance, uh, you need uh, good faith. You do it in good faith, and you exert all possible effort because you want to serve our country. In, in Moroccan, we say that we need to be flexible. I want, he says, I want to teach you uh, the local Moroccan uh, dialect. And it is not useful for us not to be flexible. We have uh, very respectful ministers. We had, at, at, during the late 50s, we had a chief of government who uh, was uh, appointed for only six months, and he has always been uh, respected. We need to be patient. Of course, uh, my relation with the king is not always very good, but we are patient. Sometimes we are patient because we want something positive and a positive impact for our society rather than become heroes in history and waste such an opportunities for our societies that would be in their service. So since 20, uh, 2011 until now, you are still in your position. Is this an indicator that there is a relative consensus uh, and agreement and harmony between you and the king? You are more harmonious than this ag in this agreement. Had it not been for this harmony and agreement, I wouldn't have worked. Had it not been for such harmony, I wouldn't have stayed in position. I would have quit because what use is it? I have two quick questions, and I would like a quick answers to open the floor for questions at the regional level. I tried to ask some uh, people from the uh, Maghreb uh, about the questions that may be addressed to you. One is about uh, the cool relations uh, between uh, Morocco and Algeria, and the other is about uh, the internal position, in particular in Morocco. Do you agree that this uh, cool uh, relation should stop? Shouldn't the relations improve on my side? This is coming very late. But I can say that such cool relations is part of the picture. If you see a Moroccan and Algerian who meet each other and who would shake hands, you would be astonished. The first time I met uh, President Abdulaziz Bouteflika was at the funeral of Ben Billah. May and he uh, greeted me very warmly, and I greeted him warmly. Uh, it, well, it was as if we are from the same family. We are one people. Uh, we are not even close people. We are one people, the Mo people of Morocco and Algeria. Then what is obstructing the improvement in relations? 
Mr. Benkiran, unfortunately, uh, there is a logic in politics that does not follow emotions or uh, convergence uh, and from proximity. Uh, when Algeria uh, recently won a match in the World, uh, in the World Cup, the, in Morocco, people went on the streets. But the, it happened in Jordan and the Gulf, yes. But there are no problems between Algeria and Jordan. But there are problems between us and Algeria. They were not supposed to cheer on the streets, but they did. Do, do we, shall we expect a meeting to happen soon? Uh, our meetings never stop with Algerians. And uh, the relations are not severed. The borders are closed, but the relations are not severed. There is cooperation in several levels. However, unfortunately, we have the problem of uh, the uh, desert, and the Moroccan demand is to open the borders, and we hope that, that this happens in the end. Uh, you can choose your friends, but you cannot choose your brothers. Your brothers are your brothers, whether you like it or not. Algerians are our brothers, and we are their brothers. They are our neighbors, and we are their neighbors. However, history will uh, dictate to us uh, to overcome this uh, period uh, and to uh, surpass it and to restore n normal relations. This is my last question. Uh, the uh, uh, Morocco is participating in the, the uh, Saudi uh, operation. Well, why did the Morocco decide to join the ranks of uh, the uh, resolute uh, storm? We have very close relations uh, with the Gulf countries. And uh, do you imagine that when they need us, uh, they wouldn't find us? Is this possible? Moreover, 32 years ago, the late uh, uh, Hassan II said on the Moroccan TV, in response uh, to the late Imam Khomeini, he said the following, if the haram is in danger, we will declare the jihad. The Moroccans do not feel that they are Moroccans and they are far from Saudi Arabia. Moroccans feel that Saudi Arabia is part of them and they are part of it. And they are part of all Arab and Islamic countries. In 1973, we also uh, supported Egypt and then we supported uh, Jordan. Our uh, Martyrs are still buried in Syria and in Egypt. Is it, isn't it the case, Mr. Amir Musa? This is our nature. We, the Moroccans, uh, do not uh, speak well or write well. Some people in uh, the Levant uh, write a lecture and they build on it a whole book of 1,000 pages. This is not what we do. But we uh, respond, uh, since uh, Salah al-Din al-Ayubi, we respond uh, to requests. Uh, there is a call by the king or the president of this country by saying that this con country, that this war should be led by the Arab Islamic forces. Uh, are you willing to join the forces that the king Abdullah II is calling for? This is part of our Holy Quran. If there is uh, war among Muslims, then you should try uh, to reconcile them. If we did this in Afghanistan, then Americans wouldn't have interfered. But we let uh, the Afghanis to kill each other. If we did this with Saddam Hussein, then the Americans wouldn't have interfered. And uh, they confused the whole area, and now we don't know what to do to exit the situation. Arabs and Muslims, when the right is obvious they should take the position of the right and to face the uh, unjust party irrespective of the result. Otherwise, uh, the, whole, the whole region will be on fire and you don't know what to face. Fine, I will f open the floor now for questions and I kindly request that the questions are brief and to introduce yourselves first. And thank you. <laughs> if you see my uh, English, he says, 
for this very, very eloquent uh, overview of the situation in Morocco. I'm an economist and you're quite impressive. Um, my question is regarding matters that are not within my area of expertise, so forgive the simplicity of the question. My name is Florence Saeed Ogden. I'm the chief economist of Arabia Monitor. Um, you mentioned, uh, uh, sir, that uh, the reason why some of the young Moroccans are, are joining efforts in the East that you find uh, unfortunate doesn't have to do with unemployment, that it has to do with other factors, perhaps neglect in policy. It would be nice if you could kindly shed further light uh, on this issue, which is on everyone's mind. And uh, if you could kindly uh, point the way forward in terms of how the region should coordinate in order to come out of the fairly dark period we are entering. You mentioned just now that it might be through better cooperation on things that are morally and objectively wrong. Thank you very much. Shall we collect several questions first? Uh, hi, I'm Youssef, uh, Global Shapers from Morocco. Thank you, Mr. Brinkian, for your your, uh, your inputs. I prefer in English. I prefer in English, so everybody can understand. Uh, my question is, I mean, first of all, congratulations for the last three years. It has been really positive as part of uh, your reforms, your hard work with the government, and then when, uh, with the king as well of Morocco. My question is that all the reforms, unfortunately, were focused on two categories of the society, either the very, very poor or the very, very rich. What is your strategy as a government of the Kingdom of Morocco to reform or to propose reforms for the, I would say, the middle class of Morocco, which did not benefit sort, sort of or so far from your, uh, uh, your government's efforts? Thank, Thank you, you very much. In uh, this uh, uh, seminar, you mentioned more than once uh, the need to develop partnership between the public and the private sectors. What are your policies in this regard? Uh, Morocco's economy is uh, doing well compared to other parts of the region, um, but our capital markets, uh, capital controls in Morocco uh, can make financial mark can make the financial markets unattractive to foreign investors. So I wanted to know if there are any plans to ease those restrictions uh, on the capital markets. شكرا في أي سؤال تاني؟ أعتقد الآن المجال مفتوح لحضرتك للإجابة. I think now the t is the time for you to answer. <laughs> when I said that unemployment was not the reason, I did not mean that unemployment did not play a role. But I explained that our country and countries that are similar to us, it's not about the fact that they did not do not find jobs, but uh, so certain groups of the society are neglected. For example, in Morocco, we have villas in, in which high-class people live, and we have buildings uh, that are excellent, deluxe buildings, and there are moderate and therefore moderate uh, buildings, and we have people who live in shacks or in random areas. They were neglected, and they did whatever they pleased in return for things that they would give uh, for small people with authority. Education is g fine in the cities. However, in, in the desert areas, we have uh, six areas that don't have uh, higher levels of education. The, we have, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, schools for girls that are uh, five kilometers away. Uh, they face difficulties uh, commuting to schools, and th that's when they drop from schools. In this modern policies, if you cannot to express yourself uh, through uh, strikes, uh, through other forms of uh, expression, nobody listens to you. This is the group that found itself in a world 
in which they were left on their own. You can see a young man who is good looking and strong and he lives in, a, in, a sh in shacks. I found a family that is living in, uh, in, in, in the shanty towns uh, with the 16 meter square houses, uh, no sanitation in the city uh, in which I was responsible. What happens? This young man goes to the street and he finds people who are well dressed, uh, who are of his same age. So he goes up for terrorism. This requires attention. When the state heeds on something, it will be successful. If you come to Morocco, you'll find that the highways that are close to the streets you can find in Europe. If you go to the train, uh, you can find the trains that are uh, uh, close to the trains uh, that are used in Europe. Uh, this means that when we give attention to things, then we are successful. But we did not give enough attention to these groups, and the time has come for us to give them our attention. The region and how it can exit uh, the ex current crisis, I believe that it's difficult for me to answer this question alone. I would only like wish to contribute with a simple idea. How did the region reach the situation? If we can identify the reason, then we can find a solution. The reason for this situation is the fact that the region ignored its own people. We are living in the 21st century, but often with a mentality that is pre-Islamic, pre without any exaggeration. We in Morocco, and I said this yesterday, we had a problem about the family law. There was a social disagreement. And to the extent uh, that our society was threatened of division because of this law, the late uh, King Hassan II said, no, we would like to establish a committee of ulama or religious uh, uh, references. This committee worked. And after King Hassan II died, uh, the, uh, the King Muhammad came. And they said that uh, I, as an emir of the believers, I cannot make what is not correct in the terms of the Islamic Sharia are correct. So our people feel that our, their dignity is maintained. Uh, just like Burqiba drank juice in Ramadan and he said, those who want to work, let them work. You can do this. And those who want to fast, that they can fast. Uh, the important thing is that you come to work on time. That he happened this uh, during Ramadan. May his soul rest in peace. I'm not against Burqiba, but this is what happened, actually. You cannot shock the society. You need uh, to respect their uh, backgrounds. Uh, we, the West, must understand we are Islamic people, no matter how they try. We can dress in modern dress code. Uh, we can wear uh, even uh, modern uh, women clothes. Uh, with time, we don't know what will happen. Uh, it's, uh, all this may happen, but it is not possible to change us from within. We are an Islamic ummah. We have three more minutes, she says. We need to include everyone. We need to include the majority when we think of our uh, decisions and our policies. And we have to be patient. I only have three more minutes left. I thought we had uh, one more hour. <laughs> Sir, uh, it is so interesting what you are saying, but still we have to abide by the time allotted to us. All right, ma'am. Uh, as for the question related to the middle class, let me say the following. We will not forget, we shall not forget the middle class, but let us be clear. Uh, they fare okay. Uh, be patient with us. Be patient with us until we rebuild a certain balance in our society. Yes, we are thinking of it, and we have a housing project for the middle class. We are thinking of how to alleviate things for education. All right, sir. So you are uh, the middle class is on uh, the program, on the government's program. Yes. 
All right, the third question, the private-public partnership. Uh, in the past, uh, the governments uh, were not convinced of this. And uh, this is something that we are thinking of in our uh, current government, and we will uh, start working on it, on this PPP. As for the capital markets, that is a very important uh, question. We are heading towards liberalization of uh, the capital movements, uh, inward, outward, inbound, outbound uh, capital movements. Uh, in the past, we had uh, certain administrative uh, regulations and rules, uh, but this year uh, we have allowed for, uh, uh, for example, uh, foreign possessions uh, abroad, uh, and we allowed uh, to have uh, 28 million dirhams instead of 6 million dirhams, uh, which is quite a success, and uh, only 2.1 million dir uh, dirhams went to the government uh, budget, uh, which means that uh, this is uh, a profit to the private uh, sector. And the uh, liberalization of the market is our future in Morocco. Sir, towards uh, the end, I think that you are uh, smiling, so do you have a question on your mind? All right, uh, Mr. Musa. Uh, let me turn uh, to the chief of uh, the Moroccan uh, government, uh, Mr. Uh, Bin Kiran. I, I agree, my name is not very Arab. Where does it come from, sir, this uh, family name? I really don't know. All right, uh, I would like to thank all the audience. I would like to thank uh, all those who did uh, put in questions to Mr. Ben Kiran, and uh, hopefully we'll meet again in Shamishir. Thank you for uh, your time, sir.